My name is Marin Devlin and I have about 20 years teaching experience in primary schools. I have also taught I have also taught um, at um, university and I've taught literacy and numeracy in the early years there. Currently I am curriculum coordinator at a school and I also have my own business called Teaching Tools for Tots where I run parent and educator workshops uh, and this is a real passion of mine. Uh, I basically uh, look at literacy and numeracy and um, thinking skills and I try to share my knowledge and skills uh, with other parents and educators. I also have two young children uh, who are my pride and joy, who I love dearly, um, and I'm really passionate about um, helping uh, or creating a love of learning. So I'm ready to begin. So I'm just going to switch it over to um, show my PowerPoint, and then I'm basically going to go through my PowerPoint, and um, some of it's interactive, so you'll um, hopefully make some comments soon as well. Um, this particular live stream is on making literacy meaningful and fun for preschoolers. Okay. I hope everyone can see that. Please write a message if you can't see that properly. Okay, so just a few things to think about um, to begin with. How do you learn best? Are you a visual learner? Are you an auditory learner? Or are you a kinesthetic learner? And also think about, do you learn from making connections between what you know and what you are learning about? Okay, um, to engage our young children, we need to cater for all of these types of learners. We also need to make learning meaningful and fun, and we need to help them make connections between their own lives and the world around them. So what is the definition of literacy? Well, according to ELF, literacy is the capacity, confidence and disposition to use language in all its forms. So literacy allows children to communicate, understand conversations and books read, read and write, follow instructions and carry out tasks, and basically function effectively in society. Therefore, literacy connects reading, writing, speaking and listening with meaningful real life experiences. So moving on, um, literacy, as I just said, is interconnected and it's a life skill. Uh, children need opportunities to be using these skills in real life situations. Children who are exposed to literacy through hands-on, practical and play-based experiences are more likely to, to engage meaningfully and successfully with them. This is just an example of um, a meaningful literacy um, experience. So a child visits a doctor and then after they've visited the doctor, they go home and with their brother or um, a friend, they um, play doctors and nurses using the vocabulary that the doctor used. And then um, as an educator uh, or a parent, you can now read books that are related to doctors. So head to your library um, and make sure that you're reading books that are to do with things that they're involved in, experiences that they've had. Um, these meaningful experiences help with social skills and making connections, problem solving skills, vocabulary, which is really important, and also communication. So just moving on, I thought I'd give you a few examples of some ways I try to make um, literacy more meaningful for children, uh, for, particularly for this age group. So first of all, their names have meaning to them, okay? Finding pictures that start with their first letter of their name uh, is a great way of, um, of using their name and showing them that the first letter of their name can actually start other words. So if you have a look at the um, picture on the screen, this was Jacinta and uh, we basically found a whole lot of magazine and also um, pictures on the internet of words that began with the same sound that starts Jacinta, so the J sound. We've got jumping jazzy, we've got jelly beans, jumper, jellyfish, jacket, juice and jam. Uh, when I did this with uh, a few boys, I had to make sure that I actually had pre-cut out all of the pictures because their attention spans are quite often uh, not as, uh, what can we say, um, they're just not as long as some girls. 
Um, preschools and child cares, they could do one or two of these a week and display them around um, the room. But make sure that when you're doing it, you write in front of them because then they can see that writing has meaning. So another activity that I do uh, for learning their names, um, so this is just a learn, learning to recognise their names, is basically writing their name out on a piece of paper and having a section at the top that you can fold over and then having each letter of their name cut out as well and getting them to organise it so that they have the letters in the right order. And then you jumble it up, you cover up the name at the top and you see if they can put their name together again. Um, this is great because their name has meaning to them and it's almost like a puzzle that they're trying to match the, the pieces but they're actually letters. Another way that it shows that um, their names have meaning. Okay, another way of demonstrating that writing has meaning um, is, as I said before, by writing in front of your child. Um, this is an example of a, a child's picture in preschool. Uh, one thing that I think is really important to mention is quite often uh, when I first started looking at these sort of pictures, I would always say, oh, what is it? Um, and I actually change the way I ask now. I'll say, can you tell me about your picture instead of what is it? Um, this makes them feel that you actually know what it is and that you're just asking them to tell them more information about it. Uh, with this picture, and I'm sure this is done at a lot of childcare centres already, um, but labelling it in front of them as they're telling you um, is a really uh, good strategy to teach them that writing has meaning. And they're more likely to remember it because um, it's their own picture. Okay, so um, another way of demonstrating that writing has meaning is by writing in front of them. Okay, um, as, I, as I've said before, involve children in making their own book. Using a sentence starter such as I like makes it much more meaningful to them um, because they're very egocentric at this age and they really like talking about themselves. Uh, for a preschool, you could make a big book and each child could have their own page um, and then this big book could sit somewhere where children are able to access it and you'll find that that'll be a book that'll come out quite often um, in, the, in the classroom situation where they really want to read what other children are doing. And they don't know how to read yet, but they know what it says because they, they have written it themselves. So other ideas for making your own book. Um, some of the other ideas I've used is I can jump, I can skip, I can run. Um, I am or I feel happy. I went to the park or I went to the beach. So they're just some other ideas. Um, making them repetitive sentences uh, is a really good idea as well and making them very simple and short. Uh, some other writing ideas could be, you could have a shopping list, um, do an invitation, a menu, postcards um, or birthday cards. That's another way of doing it. Okay. So this is a question for the people that are listening. Um, what books do your children enjoy reading at the moment? You can write down the authors because sometimes there's some really good authors that write a lot of good books. Or if there's a favourite book, please write it in the comments. Ah, spot books. Definitely. I love spot books. Any other books? that are favourites. Mem Fox books, absolutely. Possum Magic is one of my favourites. Any rhyming book at the moment, excellent. Dr Zeus has been a favourite um, in this household particularly. Uh, I think most of them are around 65 pages long, but they are excellent books for this age group. Anything about dinosaurs? Absolutely. Is anyone into the Julia Donaldson, um, Donaldson books? The Very Cranky Bear, excellent. Spot books as well. 
Eric Carl, definitely the very hungry caterpillar. Spot is very popular. Okay, fantastic. So, we'll move on to the next one. Room on the Broom has been a favorite um, amongst, uh, amongst my household, but also other preschools as well. Oh, the feelings books. Um, oh, I know the books that you mean. I'll have, I'll have to think about that. I've got them written down somewhere. The Gingerbread Man, Harry McClary, great rhyming. Oh, I like that, it, it, receiving a Julia Donaldson book. Did you happen to get that from Aldi? I'll have to remember what the feelings books are called. They're really good. We have, we've got a set at home. Okay, so just moving on. If you have any other books, please write them down because it's giving other people ideas as well. Um, so making reading meaningful and fun. Children at this age tend to like books, as you probably know, that are repetitive, have rhyming, have themes that interest or have meaning to them allow them to make connections between themselves and the world around them and quite often books that create anticipation can be scary funny or silly uh, my son went through a real phase where he really liked books that had anything to do with farting um, or yeah basically revolting books um, but i still let him get, get them out because obviously um, that's what he was interested in at the time some tips, read books that they love over and over as they get different meaning out of them each time, even if you are really, really sick of reading the same book. Um, it is a really good thing to read them um, the book over and over. And if you can, reading at least two or three books a day um, is really worthwhile, and I'll go through and um, tell you why in a moment. Just that book that's on the page at the moment called Nuffle Bunny, if you haven't um, got it or you haven't read it to your children um, please get it it's fantastic it's a book by Mo Williams which is a favorite um, amongst our household as well so just going back sorry um, I will talk to you about um, why it is important to read two or three books a day in a moment but I'm going to get you to do this for, this activity for me now can you write in the comment box as many words as you can that have a similar meaning to beautiful? Graceful, I like it. Lovely, nice, lovely, magnificent, gorgeous, fascinating, pretty, beauty, grace, lovely, gorgeous, pretty, stunning, how many words have we got so far? Probably eight to ten words. Okay, why do you think I got you to do that? Any ideas? Okay, why I asked you um, to, to tell me how many words you could think of for beautiful was um, we all tend to be very comfortable with the language that we use. I might use the word um, beautiful, um, Carly might use the word charming, Leanne might use the word splendid. We are using that language with our children and the only way that children are going to be introduced to other types of language is by reading books and by speaking to other people as well. So reading books is so, so important um, there's evidence coming out at the moment that by the age of sort of when, when children are in year two and three, they might be able to read fluently and they might have um, 
got away with reading um, really big books um, impressively to teachers etc and then by the age of about year two year three it comes to realization that they're not actually comprehending or understanding what they're reading because they might be able to read those big words but they don't necessarily understand what they mean because they don't understand the vocabulary so it's so important to be reading books um, to children early on and reading consistently and reading at least two or three books a day. Expand vocabulary, yes, that's absolutely right. So I'm just gonna show you a slide now, which I just thought was interesting. Um, so why can't I skip um, my 20 minutes of reading tonight? So just think about student A who reads 20 minutes each day. That child reads 3,600 minutes in a school year, which could amount to 1,800,000 words. Student B, who reads five minutes each day, is it, that's a total of 900 minutes in a school year, which is 282,000 words. And student C, who might only read one minute a day, only um, is exposed to 8,000 words in that school year. Okay, So by the end of grade six, student A will have read the equivalent of 60 whole school days, while student B will have read only 15 minutes, um, sorry, 15 school days. So which student would we expect to have the better vocabulary? Obviously, um, student A. Every minute does add up, definitely. Okay, um, so I thought that was a very interesting um, look on reading and how important reading is. Um, and even in childcare centres and preschools, I still think that they um, should be reading two or three books a day because some of the children that are coming to the preschools and coming to um, childcare centres might be being exposed to no books at home. So the more books that they're exposed to in, um, in that educational setting, the better. Okay, so moving on. Um, one extra thing that I wanted to include, um, and I found it really hard when I was doing this uh, live stream to choose what to put in and what not to put in because there is obviously so much that, um, that I could put into this. But one thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the reading uh, and children, that children tend to love um, books that rhyme and a few people have mentioned that already. But rhyming is really, really important. And it's really, really important um, that they're able to hear rhyme and be able to say words that rhyme um, before they go to school. Because this really helps um, to make connections with reading and writing later on. So I'll just show you this slide. Okay, so um, rhyming, it helps children make connections, as I just said, with reading and writing later on. So we have the word um, cat and hat here. Um, if a child is able to hear that the words rhyme, so if they're able to hear cat and hat um, rhyme, then when they come across it later on in kindergarten and year one, when they come across it in their writing um, and also in their reading, if they know the word cat, they're more likely to look at the word hat and recognize that it's the same pattern, um, which is, um, a really a really great help when they're reading reading okay so some simple ideas to help children with rhyming um, I'll just turn it around some simple ideas to help children with, with rhyming are to make up silly sentences with the same word endings so quite often if I'm in the car with my own children uh, we first of all think of all the words that might rhyme with at so we talk about hat cat sat, mat, rat, and then we think of a silly sentence that we can use um, with all of those words. So an example is the fat cat um, sat on the rat which made her go splat. Uh, my son went through a stage where he wanted everything to rhyme with poo and we, which was very exciting as you can imagine, but he's rhyming so I'm happy. Uh, I also remember a light bulb moment uh, with my daughter when she was in kindergarten and we were looking at the word look and um, then she found another word in the book that said shook and she looked at the word ending and went, oh my gosh, 
they both end in ook. <gasps> That's why they rhyme. That's why they sound the same. I can see the pattern. And um, that, was, that was obviously very exciting, but it is so important for them to learn how to um, rhyme before they go to school. And it's such an easy thing to teach them as well. Ah, Duck in the Truck. Sorry, I just read Carly's um, Duck in the Truck is an awesome book for rhyming. I love that book. <laughs> oh, and I love that, Melissa, um, that your son at the moment is um, into anything toilet related. That's great. Um, more rhyming. Uh, the ways of um, teaching rhyming, obviously, is reading books that rhyme. Quite often, if you're reading Dr. Zeus books particularly, they will finish off the rhyme for you. Um, there's also lots of memory and snap um, cards out there that have words and pictures that rhyme. And I actually looked on Twinkle and I found um, quite a few rhyming ones on Twinkle on the, on the site um, website, which looked really good. And um, sorry... Alina, I'd just look at your comment. Rhyming is a necessary skill for phonological awareness. You're absolutely right. It is one of the um, areas of phonological awareness. Um, and I think it's one of those things that can be done before they obviously um, go to school. Another one that I quite often do um, with children before they go to school is teach them syllables. Um, I don't actually, uh, when, I t when I say I teach them syllables, I don't um, talk about the word syllables, um, but we talk about the beats that are in a word. So for instance, if we were to choose the word dinosaur, one way I try to get children to understand what syllables are is I'll get them to put their hand underneath their chin and say the word dinosaur really slowly. So they go dine o saw and dinosaur has three syllables or three beats or three counts. And quite often um, you'll see a class um, wandering around their backyard um, saying words and clapping the beat or stomping the beat, um, which is each syllable. So they'll be going around going dinosaur, dinosaur, habitat, habitat. Um, and if they learn syllables, uh, it actually helps quite a lot with uh, their reading and they're writing later on because they're able to put the words into parts so they can start writing dine, o, saw. Okay, so that's another tip for um, teaching syllables. Um, I also have ones um, obviously that I use for teaching the phonemes or the sounds in, in words. Um, one thing with, with phonemes is uh, make sure that we're teaching them before they go to school the sounds that are in the words. Not necessarily the letter names, but the sounds, because the letter sounds are the ones that are going to help them with reading later on. If you teach a child B, um, and then they try to sound out the word bat, B, A, T is not going to help them to blend those sounds together. They need to learn B, A, T, B, A, T, bat. Okay? Um, it is connected with chunking, yes. <laughs> um, so it's actually putting it together. Um, so that's a, a, a way of teaching phonemes is I would put maybe four different items out on a table and I would ask uh, the children, I'd first of all say what the items were. So I might say, you know, cup, scissors, and I would say k -k cup, s -s scissors. And then I'd ask the children, can you find something on that table that starts with a k? But I would only use um, I would only use a couple of items if I was going to do that um, because obviously it's too much if you have um, too many things around the room. When you play I Spy, play it with sounds rather than with um, the letter name. So I Spy with my little I, something beginning with K um, rather than C. This will really help with their reading later on. Okay, uh, that's pretty much... I'm just trying to think what else I had. I'll just have a look. Um, yeah, so I've pretty much, I've pretty much finished what I was going to talk about um, tonight. So I hope it has given you some ideas on how you can help make literacy more um, meaningful and fun for preschoolers. Uh, I would love to answer some questions now and don't forget if you leave your um, email address I'm more than happy to send you uh, a, um, a, a 
certificate of attendance. Um, if you have any questions or comments, write them in the comment box, as I just said. Um, and you're more than welcome to visit my Facebook page or my website um, to get some other ideas because I'm always putting stuff up on my website um, as well. So are there any questions that anyone has that um, they would like to ask? I'm more than happy to answer those. Ah, oh, the rhyming bingo. That was one of the ones that I saw actually. And I'll just show you my, so that's my website and my Facebook page. That's great, Sarah, that you're playing bingo using the sounds rather than the letter names. Can I share one more thing before I answer questions? I'm going to share one more thing before I answer questions. I'm just going to show you something that I do um, for teaching. Um, one thing that we find once children get to kindergarten and year one, that they have learnt really bad habits with their writing and they're forming the letters incorrectly. Uh, and one thing that I do, uh, and it's worked wonders, is I'll show you, if you can see, maybe I should put it over. Maybe I'll put it over this, oh, sorry, I'll just turn it around. Okay, so I'm just going to write, oh no, that's not working. Oh no, you can see it. I'll just write a name, sorry. So quite often when you go into um, childcare centres and preschools, I find that there's a sign-on book. I find um, when I go into childcare centres and um, preschools that there's a sign-on book and quite often the children's name is there and then the idea is, is for them to practice their name. Uh, the only problem is with that is if the child is forming the letters incorrectly, they're likely to be forming those letters incorrectly every single day. So by the time those children go to school, they are writing their names. They might, their name might be beautifully written, but they're actually forming those letters incorrectly. And it's really hard to change that by the time they get to kindergarten and year one because the numbers in the classroom are obviously higher and it, you, can, you can't possibly get to every child. Um, so one thing I did um, before my children went to school um, is to teach them, I would write down where they should start each letter. So I'll just show you. And then this, once it's done once, you can photocopy it in colour. Um, for preschools and have this on there. You can have it written like that. So basically the red dots show uh, where you should start writing each letter and it's more likely that they're going to be forming those letters correctly. So that's just a tip that I would love to see more in childcare centres and in preschools because that is where there's quite a lot of um, there's, there's sign-on books where they're writing their name over and over and over again and possibly forming the letters incorrectly. So that's just an extra tip. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, um, please ask. Okay, thank you. Yes, there are, there are versions out there that have a dot um, for the font. I haven't been able to find one in New South Wales, but where you can actually print out children's names with the dots on each individual letter. If there is one, I'd love to know about it. Ah, oh, how do I teach correct pencil grip? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, so my daughter did it quite naturally um, and started quite early, whereas my son took forever and had no interest in writing um, or drawing. So for him, I concentrated um, on other ways that he could develop his fine motor skills um, and build up the muscles in his hands, etc. So I got lots of Duplo, um, and then after Duplo it was Lego, um, and then it was Play-Doh. Um, I got cotton, cotton buds where um, you actually are forced to hold it in a particular way. 
um, to actually be out and you put them into paint and you make like a dot painting or whatever. Um, I also encourage the correct pencil grip um, by using shorter textures. Textures are great because they make a mark without putting too much pressure. Using pencils, however, they have to really press hard and quite often that causes them to hold it like this. Um, whereas a, a texter um, and a short texter at that, um, they actually are encouraged to hold it in a different way because it's very hard to hold something short um, like that. And I honestly think that pencil grip should be corrected around um, the age of four and a half, five. If they're, I think it's the modified tripod, tripod grip is expected around the age, I think it's around three and a half to four. Um, and then by the age of around five, it's supposed to change to the um, proper proper grip. So, yeah, so that's, so that's my view on, on the actual pencil grips. Um, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't start using pencil grips until they're well and truly maybe halfway through kindergarten. I definitely wouldn't encourage to use them before kindergarten unless there was a really big problem. Um, yeah, putting the cotton ball in between the, the pinky and the palm and, and holding it that way. Is that what you mean, Leanne? So the cotton, the cotton ball trick that I know is you put a cotton ball um, in between the pinky and you, the palm of your hand, um, which sort of, sort of forces it to, um, to, to hold the pencil that way. The tennis ball monster, I haven't heard of that one. I've also heard of um, putting a sock over the hand but putting a hole for the thumb and for the um, forefinger and so that they're the only fingers they're actually able to hold out of the um, sock and all the rest are tucked under. I actually really like that idea and sometimes I've seen it where they actually um, make a face on the sock. So if they're really having difficulty with it then that's, um, that's definitely a possibility as well, the sock, the sock puppet. Yeah, the sock idea, it's definitely worth trying because it's a bit of fun to make it for art and craft as well. <laughs> if you look on Pinterest and you look up uh, pencil grip and sock puppets or something, I'm sure that you'd be able to um, find some examples there. Ah, oh, I like that fitting counters into the, um, into the tennis ball. I haven't heard of that one before. I like it. And the other thing you can do for fine motor as well is um, get tongs and get them to um, use the tongs to move like small little soft balls or whatever from one spot into another. Um, that's a really good one to build up the muscles and get them to use their fine motor skills as well. <laughs> Pop bubble wrap, one bubble at a time. That's great, Carly. <laughs> I like that. Another thing that's really good for, um, for that is um, getting them to peel stickers off and put them onto a sheet of paper or whatever. Um, quite When my children were quite young, I'd peel the backing of the stickers off first so that it was easier for them to take the sticker off and put it back onto a piece of paper. Yep, using pegs is great as well. Using pegs for painting as well, so putting a pom-pom or um, cotton wool um, at the end of the peg and using it to dip in. Um, it, it forces them to hold it in a tripod grip, grip again. Oh, I'm just thinking, um, writing in sand is great. Yep, Play-Doh is fantastic as well. Uh, okay, so Melissa, who haven't had preschooling but have had book re reading, writing experiences at home. Um, with When you, when you say um, catch up, I mean, I, I think the best way um, is, is by obviously reading, continue reading to them. Um, as you know, most of the home readers they bring home um, initially are extremely boring and very repetitive. And it's really important to keep up that reading um, with them. Um, the books that they actually enjoy are the ones that you're able to read to them. So I think that's a really important start. Um, lots of work with sounds, like playing, as I said before, that I spy game um, with sounds. I also use cups where I put sounds on the cups and um, I, it's basically you get a, um, 
you get them to stack the cups after they've said the sound or said the sight word um, and then they get to knock it down with a ball or a Nerf gun, um, Nerf gun the, the tower of cups that they have um, created. But there's lots of other ways as well, but they're just a couple of ways that I would, um, I would focus on. I think they need to know the sounds. They need to be able to um, understand, be able to hear the phonemes, which are the sounds. They need to be able to hear rhyme, and they also need to be able to, um, to hear syllables in words. I think that's really important. Oh, you made homemade crayons. I'd love to know how you did that. That's great. Oh, Melissa, sorry, I didn't realize you meant as a teacher. Um, I would still play the cup game because as a whole class, you could definitely be doing that where you um, put sounds on each of the cups or, or sight words and they get to put them up as they say them and then you get some children to choose um, to knock them down. Lynn, um, yeah, that's really interesting that they don't even recognize um, that a sentence is made up of words. They need to be able to know it has words before they can even recognize um, or think about the sounds. You're absolutely and, right. And uh, I'm actually looking into doing quite a number of webinars in the future. So I haven't got any uh, workshops actually in the Southern Shire unless people want to organize one um, with a group, which quite often happens with playgroups, etc. They organize a, a workshop um, and I'm happy to do a workshop for six or more um, mums or dads or educators um, and yeah I can come to you or I can have the workshops here. I have a small uh, building at the back of our house which I've converted basically into a workshop room which is what where I hold them and I don't have more than 10 people in a workshop. So um, yeah so that's pretty much what I'm doing in the next uh, couple of months. <laughs> Lynn, I totally agree with you. Um, and phonological awareness, um, as I said before, is so easy to teach children before they go to school. Um, and I, yeah, I can't place enough importance on it either. I'm completely in agreement. <laughs> thank you, Twinkle, and thank you, Rebecca, for letting me have this opportunity. I've really appreciated it and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I was quite nervous before I started, but um, I yeah feel good about it now, and it's it's um, I feel that other people have shared some really good ideas as well, which I really like. See you later. Bye.